Good morning. Welcome back to Marty's Tying Bench. It's springtime, so I'm responding to some comments I've been getting from Vice Squad about crane fly larvae. So, we get to tie something a little big and beefy. This is a size 8 hook. It's a Dairiki 285. You can use a 200R. You can use a, a Montana Fly is 71... 32, something like that. Or you can use a straight shank hook. This is a, a bug that kind of lives in the turf. Some of them are aquatic. A lot of them just live in the, in the uh, sub, in the shoreline and then get washed in during rainstorms. So that's a good time to fish it here near runoff and in springtime. Got about 15 turns of lead wire. This is 0.025. The number of turns is going to be determined by the size of the hook and the size of the lead you got, but you want to have some open space in front of the lead and behind. Going to use a 140 denier thread, something a little stronger, and build a little thread dam in front and a little thread dam behind and while I'm here I'm going to build that up just a little bit actually let's get some materials in there and see just how much thread we really need for kind of a well what we're going to call a tail just for fly purposes I'm going to get some Marabou, and when you get the, get the fluffy stuff, pull those woolly booger marabou, little round fluffy tufts. And I'm going to get a bundle of that, and before I tie it in, what I'm going to do is pinch it and break it off. So it's not square like you would get cutting it. You don't want to cut it. It's still a little ragged, but it's a little more stubby. We'll tie that in. The next material is a scud back. You can use just about any color. Make make and match your bug. This one is going to be kind of a light brown on top of olive. See, I kind of just pinched that on there with my thumb until I got a loose wrap around. And then I'll cup that hook as I move the thread back until it gets to the barb of the hook or past. You want to use the curve of the hook a little bit here. And while it's back here, we're going to install some rib material. And this is monofilament. Um, you'll find it works better if it's at least 3x, maybe a little bigger if you got it. And I'm going to back that off because I don't want that tied in all the way to the back. I want there to be some space behind the monofilament. And I want the monofilament on the side away from me so that when I start wraps, it's not going to crinkle my shell back. All right. I am ready for some dubbing. I'm going to build a little bit of a ramp on the front so that when my materials come off of that lead coil, they don't create an uneven space. Now, this is how much dubbing it would take to dub a nice fat crane fly larva, but we're going to use some filler underneath so we'll only need about that much or probably less. The filler we're going to use is good old worm yarn, ultra chenille, and I've chosen a brown because I can get that to show through the dubbing and make it kind of a brown and olive mottled color. And we'll tie that in right behind the lead. And again, I'm not going back all the way. I got space behind it. I'm trying to create 
a little bit of a taper here. Move the thread to the front. Make these wraps snug. You're going to have to make sure the hook is good and tight in your vise. Here I got to the ramp part. We'll get it to kind of slide off and create a little bit of a taper at the front. I got pretty close. I got within an eye length of the eye of the hook. And I want to dub from back to front, so I'll just jump that thread through. Okay, now you see that collar of thread? We're going to fill that in with dubbing to start our taper. And this is how much I've got to work with, and we'll see how much I've got left when I'm done. Because I'm only going to put a little bit at a time on. This is semi seal, excuse me, it's Arizona synthetic dubbing. This is um, this kind of the same material, only cut to dubbing length. I want to give a turn or two behind that monofilament and just kind of fill it in. There we go. Now, as I jump up and dub on top of the uh, worm yarn. I'm not going to worry about making it dense. I want to let some of that brown fuzz show through. And rather than put this dubbing on in a long 12-15 inch noodle, I'm just going to do a few few inches at a time, something you can handle. Now that thread is sinking down into that worm yarn and it's making the dubbing nice and spiky. One more time I'll do it here with the dubbing. There, I got a little taper at the front end. Now that's how much dubbing I got left. I got enough to do another one. Okay. Kind of gently pull the scud back over the top. If you got a rotary vise, I'm going to turn it towards myself so I get it centered on the top. I'm stretching it. A little more than gently, but not real hard. And get a good number of side-by-side -side turns there so that that scud back doesn't slide out underneath. I'm going to cut it close, make sure you don't cut your thread. And now when I come through with the monofilament, since I got turns of dubbing behind it, the first one will already be up there on the Scud back. Space them out a little bit. You want to get about nine or ten of these. So one, two, three, four. If your fifth one isn't anywhere near the middle, back them off and do it again. That's the fifth one. Six, seven, eight, nine. Those are evenly spaced. That's a pretty good look. Tie that monofilament off. And go ahead and make whatever w, whatever uh, thread wraps you need to even that out. Kind of enhance or maintain the taper. I 
Now these bugs don't have legs, but it's kind of traditional to tease out whatever dubbing you got on the bottom, bottom like a scud. But then I'm going to cut them pretty short. And there we go, crane fly larva. It's weighted so you can put a dropper behind it and fish a little midge or rainbow warrior or something behind it, some other springtime fly. You can use this thing all year round. Obviously the rainy season is the popular time to use it. So there you go, crane fly larva.